Welcome to the channel. In this video, I'm going to go over this article that says how to improve your motion graphic design skills. So this is an article that I found very useful and I'm just going to go over this and I'm going to give some of my thoughts, share my own experience with you. So let's dive in. Now the very first point mentioned over here is the basics. So you need to know the basics. Over here it says that you need to learn basic principles of design, animation, and storytelling. Now, you can go through a conventional route by going over a course or even a book, but you can also take an unconventional route, which I took, which is basically by learning how to do from different creators online and implementing those design and just learning from them bit by bit how each principle is implemented in the project, in any project. And over here, it says that there are 12 principles. So contrast, balance, emphasis, proportion, hierarchy, repetition, rhythm, pattern, white space, movement, variety, and unity. So these are some of the basic principles that you need to know. You need to have a strong foundation of these principles in order to be a good motion designer. And these are basic design principles. You can basically pick up on these from any book, any course. But like I said, you can also do an unconventional thing by going over tutorials, videos, and learning from different creators and implementing them bit by bit, understanding how it works. And that will be a more hands-on experience in that regard. So this is the basics. You need to know the basics. Now, the next thing is you need to choose your software. Now, I would suggest go ahead and get any software that you can get your hands on and just get started because you need to start from somewhere and whenever you're starting when you're whenever you're beginning you need to know how to do basic editing and which can be done in any software that you pick now over here it mentions some of the softwares such as after effects cinema 3d blender premiere pro but you don't need to like it says you don't need to learn all of them you just need to know one of them you can get started from one of them and get used to it and make sure that you know the workings of that software and then you can slowly and steadily improve your skills using that software. So for example, I started with Premiere Pro After Effects, but then I shifted towards DaVinci Resolve. Now, you can get started from any software. I would even say go ahead and get started from an app such as CapCut because it gives you the basic editing tools that you need for editing and you can just get started. But when it comes to motion graphics, you definitely need something such as After Effects or when it comes to DaVinci Resolve, it has a Fusion tab. Now, I would recommend that if you don't want to purchase a software and you have the specs, the right specs, the right system, you can just go ahead and download DaVinci Resolve, which is free and you can get started from free. Now. If you can purchase Premiere Pro After Effects and you have access to them, I would say go ahead and use them because these are the ones which will give you basic tools and also which will give you the basic 2D editing tools that you can use because that is where you are going to start from. You won't be starting from something, let's say 3D because, and you can, you can start from 3D. That's up to you. But mostly when you're starting to edit, you will start from basic 2D editing and then move on to some complex 3D stuff, which you can find in software such as Blender, Cinema 3D, but that's up to you. So choose any software and get started. And then you can slow and steadily improve your skills. So the third point over here is to practice and experiment. Now it says that the best way to improve your motion graphic design skills is to practice and experiment. And like I said, you can start with an unconventional route. Just go over tutorials, videos, and see how other creators are making their videos or what they are teaching. You can just use that, implement that. And first, you can just simply copy and paste. And then slowly and steadily, you can just go ahead and make some adjustments, minor adjustments, and then, you know, some tweaks here and there. And that will give you a unique... Uh, outcome which you can claim as your own so those are some of the ways that you can approach this 
which comes under this practice and experiment, you can find inspiration from other motion graphic designers or any movie, any video that you find on YouTube. You can just go ahead, see and watch them and you can, let's say, just reverse engineer them and try to understand, decode them bit by bit, like what, what elements are being used in the video and then you can implement them on your own or in your own way. So these are some of the ways which you can use for practicing and experimenting, which will help you improve your motion graphic skills. And like it says that, don't be afraid to make mistakes and learn from them. So I would say go ahead and make mistakes on purpose because, and, and once you make mistakes on purpose, just go ahead and publish them and let other people give you some feedback. Now, the reason for that is that you need to know how you can do experimentation. Mostly people don't do something different. They just stick to whatever the people are making and they don't usually make adjustments or they don't take the risk to make something different. So that's why I would say just go ahead and make a mistake on purpose and then publish it and then see how other people react to it. And that will give you a better understanding of how people react to different things. And maybe your mistake can be something which people might find interesting. So that is one of the ways that you can experiment. Now, moving on to the fourth step, which basically ties in with the last thing that I said, which is getting the reaction from people. And it says that to get feedback from people or to get critique from people. And that is important. That's why I said, just go ahead and publish stuff and let other people respond or react to it, give your suggestions. But it says over here that you can also ask feedback from your friends, family, or clients. But I would say, go ahead and find someone who is already in this field, who is already experienced enough that can give you a, an honest feedback. Of course, you can get feedback from these people as well or any general person. But I would say go ahead and specifically get feedback from those people who are already in the field, who are working. That will give you a better perspective of where your weaknesses are and you can just identify them and then make improvements. So this is just the fourth point about feedback and critique. And then let's move on to the fifth one, which is building your portfolio. Now, I personally made a terrible mistake and just like it says in this comment over here, I'm terrible about this. I don't even have a reel. Same with me. I also don't have much portfolio projects with me. I do have pro projects now, but I did not have projects when I was starting. That was a major setback that made me realize that I need to get enough portfolio projects in order to find work in this field. And you need to build a portfolio in such a way that they can articulate all of your skills. So make sure you are working on your portfolio before you even get started in the, let's say freelance industry or just going and finding a job. So make sure you have a portfolio. Of course, everyone says this, you need to have a portfolio, you need to have a portfolio, but what exactly do you need in your portfolio? And that is, you need to know what kind of a work is being uh, posted on job sites or let's say freelance platforms. You need to know those skills specifically. And what you can do is you can just shortlist those things which are very common in those uh, areas in the job postings and the freelance platforms. And you can just work on those or you can find some anomalies in those uh, job listings and then you can work on those which will make you more unique which will make your portfolio more unique and you can have those skills which most people are not let's say providing of course the final step is keep learning and growing yes obviously we're going to be making more and more projects more and more portfolio projects and once you have a project that you have worked on as a let's say freelancer or, or on your job you can just put that in your portfolio as well. So this is a never ending journey of learning things. And you need to also make sure that you are learning 
new things and not just, you know, making things again and again. For example, you're working on a video. You have a video project where you are making motion graphics, simple 2D motion graphics. And you're, you've been making that for, let's say, one year. Now for the next year, you need to make sure that you start working on something different. Let's say 3D. You start picking up 3D and start implementing that, making some projects for that. So you need to add skills to your portfolio, which you can showcase and which will actually showcase for future clients that you have been growing, you have been learning. And this is the experience that you gained in all of these years or over the course of your career. So this was it for this video. I hope you like these tips and I'll see you in the next one.